You're in the Business Insurance Zone with me, Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and contributing author to Backroom Technician. This week on The Biz, the mid-year life insurance review for 2013. And on today's show, Variable Universal Life with special guest Bobby Samuelson, executive editor of the Life Product Review. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Well, welcome everyone to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm your host, Steve Savant. We're broadcasting to a nationwide audience of financial advisors right here in Fountain Hills, Arizona, home of America's largest fountain. And with me today, day two, life insurance specialist, Bobby Samuelson. And you know, I, Bobby, we talked about AG 38 yesterday and 37, right. kind of a segue into today's program. For about the last four years, everybody said, well, after 2008, VUL's dead. <laughs> I mean, it is just dead. Yeah. Nobody's talking about it. Everybody's dropping their security license. And for all of you who have dropped your Series 6, you may regret it. You will regret it. I think you're going to regret it because everybody has gotten lean and mean on these contracts. Whether you're buying it for death benefit, which I'm not the biggest fan of, right. or you're buying it, which I think is income, which could be a major play, especially if you want to stay in the market. This could be the next revolution up. What's happening in the market today is so huge, and some of the biggest players in VUL have really gotten their act together. Let's talk, let's kind of introduce an update. What's going on in VUL right now today as far as why is this becoming such a, maybe a resurrection of an old product? Yeah, I, I really do think it's a resurrection. Um, I think, you know, people counted it out in 2008, but if you actually look at the persistency of VUL products, from 2007 to 2009, which the Society of Actuaries mm -hmm. does on a, on a pretty regular basis. Um, they kind of have these rolling persistency studies. The, there's an interesting thing that happened. VUL lapse rates were actually less than indexed UL lapse rates. How can that be? There's a lot of reasons for that, I think, which is probably a conversation for a different day. But suffice it to say that everyone has a story about VUL products blowing up. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, if you look at why that happened, there are a couple of key reasons. Number one is, when producers illustrated VUL, what rate did they show? Back in the day. 12. Okay, so when that didn't happen, right, the policies blow up. Well, okay, mm -hmm. is that the fault of the product or is that the fault of the agent who sold it at 12%? Mm -hmm. It's the agent who sold it at 12%. Mm -hmm. And not only that, too, to your point, you know, if you minimally fund these things, right, based on the 12% number, then of course they're going to lapse. And so the reality is if, if producers mm -hmm. had done what you just said, which is overfunded the policies and illustrated them conservatively, we'd have a lot of happy VUL clients. Mm -hmm. so, I think, so I think when you look at VUL, VUL, call, VUL got to be the black sheep of the insurance business because of a happenstance in the equity markets. We had a really bad decade and some very aggressive sales practices before that. So those two things caused all this problem with VUL, the perce perceived problem. But the, you look at the data and you say, well, VUL actually didn't lapse, at, actually lapsed le at, lower, at a lower rate than index VUL did. And so going forward, okay, why is VUL so attractive? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one is, you know, when interest rates go up, what happens to bond values? Mm -hmm. What happens? They go down. They go down. So if I'm a life insurance company and I'm taking in all this money in today's extremely low interest rate environment, and I think that interest rates are going up, what's going to happen to the value of my bonds after I buy them? I'm going to get killed. You're going to get killed. Right. Okay, so if I can get people into a separate account VUL contract, I'm now off the hook for the risk and the rising interest the rate carrier. The carrier is, right, right. If I'm a carrier and I can get people into it. And so, so I think there's a huge benefit to that um, in terms of all sorts of creative sub-accounts that you can do inside of a VUL product. So you look at something like Axis MSO Rider, mm -hmm. right? It's an index bucket inside of a VUL contract. Pack Life is an index bucket inside of a mm -hmm. VUL contract. They also have fixed account options. They also have bond funds. They also have S&P funds. They have emerging market funds. They have all sorts of stuff that really provide a, a pr really robust platform for, for sort of mm -hmm. long-term growth. So I think VUL actually is probably uh, a product of the future. You know, if people want a contract to overfund and pull out money and have a little bit of risk, that's going to be, in my opinion, the mm -hmm. product of choice. Again, because of this bond issue and a rising rate environment, but also too because of the flexibility of the offerings. Bobby, I was at the Thunderbird School of Management. I could not believe the number one seminar. They had 13 seminars, talked about almost everything you could think of under the planet, very eclectic subjects. Right. But the number one subject, where you had the most attendance by billionaires who fly into to Scottsdale for this once a year event was VUL Offshore. Not that I want to get into private placement so much, but that they understand equities with a tax wrapper. I mean, they get this. Yeah, yeah. I think I think anyone gets that. I mean, mm -hmm. so I worked with a doctor in Ohio recently who uh, who really got this too, and, and he sort of said, "Look, if if I can get a well designed VUL, that." causes me 50 basis points of drag in the long run from policy charges. Mm -hmm. You know, the simple equation going on in his head is, well, are my taxes going to be greater than my policy charges? 
and I don't, no one knows what taxes are going to be in the long mm -hmm. run, right? But, but if you can calculate that policy charges cause you a 50 basis point drag in the long, long run, right, on a mm -hmm. properly designed, properly administered product, mm -hmm. is that worth getting rid of all your taxes? And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people say yes. Yeah. So it's not just billionaires. I think it's normal mm -hmm. people. It's people with you know, higher incomes that have maybe maxed out all their other options. They're going to look at VUL and say, this is a good wrapper. Now, I, mm -hmm. I think that, by the way, poses a major risk to us as an insurance industry existentially because the more people that use our products as tax wrappers, the more likely we are to lose that status, mm -hmm. right? Think about that. I mean, mm -hmm. if everyone sold life insurance just for tax wrappers, then mm -hmm. we, we would have a problem because what about our widows and orphans story, which is why we get our tax advantages to begin with. Mm -hmm. So we as an industry have to balance this out and say, well, we realize that there's a benefit here, mm -hmm. but we've got to remember that we've got to sell life insurance for life insurance. And that's got to be the primary thing. We mm -hmm. can't just jump on this VUL, mm -hmm. IUL distribution bandwagon. Um, see what I'm saying? I mean, yes. I think there's a lot All of risk. Right. So we're saying is the, the ultimate reason why life insurance is an indemnification sale. Okay, fair enough. At the same time, I've noticed that carriers, this is carrier yeah, propaganda yeah, yeah. now, is, oh, they're all coming out with the new way of explaining supplemental retirement income. Absolutely. It's the new clip phrase. Absolutely. So, so I hear what you're saying, and I definitely don't want to lose my tax treatment status by the government, which right. is what you're alluding to. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I, I'm looking at major issues. We are one of the largest debenture purchasers in the, in the world for United States bonds, and it would be pretty tough for them to maybe go after us on the tax issue when we're there we're the ones that are actually buying their bonds. I think so, I think so, but don't underestimate. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything could change. You know, you look at some of the rules that are trying to get through mm -hmm. Congress right now, and these guys are saying start over with a clean slate. Well, we would have to fight back for our, for our exceptions. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, don't underestimate it. Right. I think it's possible, and I think, again, the more we talk about this as a mm -hmm. tax-free product, and people talk about that, mm -hmm. the, greater we ha the greater risk we have of losing that. And that's, that's what worries mm -hmm. me. Even though I think the product mm -hmm. is a great fit, can be designed appropriately to do some fantastic things for clients. Well, Bobby Samuelson just told me to quit blogging about supplemental income <laughs> on PUL. Well, listen, we're going to come back and talk more about it with Bobby. And I got to tell you something. This is where we're going to have a debate here. Don't forget, you can go to IULUniversity.com for the best education on retirement income. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Did you know the average 401k runs out of money just seven to eight years into retirement? Time Magazine, The Wall Street Journal, and many other publications have warned of the difficulty of saving with a 401k. But what if there was a way to create tax-free lifetime retirement income with no stock market risk? Good news, there is. You know, living in fear of the next market dive is not the way I want to live my life. Why would I go out there and take on risk when I don't need to? I have a lot less stress knowing I can't lose any more of my retirement savings in the stock market. Call now to receive your free, no-obligation analysis of what this retirement vehicle could do for you. A comparison to your current retirement plan and a free video that explains this exciting opportunity. Start planning a retirement you can enjoy instead of worrying about future tax increases and stock market losses. Creating income that will last your entire life is the most important thing you'll ever do. Take control of your future. Call now for your free analysis, comparison, and video. Well, welcome back to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm Steve Savant with Bobby Samuelson. And remember, you can order today's materials right at thebiz.tv. And while you're out there, click on the Backroom Technician icon right on the Biz blog where I blog for their 30-day free trial offer for the best needs analysis and education materials that address almost every financial planning scenario. And just a heads up before moving forward with anything we talk about, especially when I talk about tax anything, always talk to your tax advisor or legal counselor, as well as your broker dealer compliance officer if you're so FINRA licensed. We're talking about VUL. It's not dead. It's now coming out. It's the phoenix coming out of the ashes. <laughs> and we're talking about the, and yeah, you know, Bobby, just before we close out the segment, I really get the politics of what you're saying, right? But right now, I think we're, we're on a train of income. I mean, retirement income is the name of the game. Yeah. And we have people that have high tax brackets that are looking for VUL. I can still be in the equity market, and I can get some favorable tax treatment at the same time. Yeah, right. And let, let's excuse for a second what may happen to taxation going forward mm -hmm. and say, okay, well, how does this instrument work kind of on its own merits? And that's where I really think there is power here. And like I said, I, a well-designed VUL contract can, can limit the lifetime drag of policy charges to about 50 basis points. So if you assume you know investments are going to do 
okay, not including investment expenses, which is a separate issue, mm -hmm. then, then you can actually get out on a rate of return basis, money in, money out on a VUL, about 5.5%. Mm -hmm. On again, on a well-designed, well-administered VUL contract. Now, I think the oh. issue is, a lot of people don't design them very well, mm -hmm. oh, for sure. or, and they don't administer them. So the reality is, you know, eight times, 10 years out, you need to make some changes in the product, mm -hmm. depending on how you design it, and then when the distribution starts, someone has to be there to make sure that the right number comes out, given the set of market fluctuations, that the assets are allocated correctly inside that product to make sure that it's sustainable. And that, to me, is the biggest risk in VUL, is you try to put these things on autopilot, or really any supplemental mm -hmm. retirement plan, put them on autopilot, because they look great in the illustration, which is, of course, on autopilot, right? And then you get 10, 15, 20 years out, and you need someone who's mm -hmm. constantly making sure that it does mm -hmm. what it's going to do. And people just aren't willing to do that. Well, I think you, you just argued, kind of, and we're going to be talking about this in, later on the week, a little bit for indexing, because the 100% the probability rate on the S&P, 20-year, two 20-year tranches they looked at was 5.5 with no beta risk to the account. So I'm thinking, well, if I'm making 5.5 five on VUL, the way we've designed it and we've talked about it, including we expensed out the policy expense on right. that, I'm like, well, the trade-off is... Yeah, I just threw that yeah. number out as an example. So right. I wouldn't really... So that, I think that's a, a bigger issue, which is, okay, mm -hmm. what do you really give up with index UL then? What, mm -hmm. you, what you get is a little bit more stability in the product. You get a mm -hmm. lot less risk. But if you take less risk, what do you get less of? Less return. Less return. So if you're willing mm -hmm. to take that less risk... Now, keep in mind, too, policy charges for VUL on IUL tend to be very similar. Mm -hmm. IUL is a little higher. Depends on how you measure it. But, mm -hmm. but in general, that's the case. So I think... I think Index VUL will give you more consistency, but a lot less return. But I think all these innovations that are coming out on the VUL side, managed sub-accounts, having index buckets inside mm -hmm. of VUL, give you really all the benefits of an index product mm -hmm. as long as somebody's going to watch it. And by the way, indexing needs the mm. same sort of administrative protection as well, because even if we assume five and a half, right, 100%, of course, 100%. If anything was 100%, right, we wouldn't be in the life insurance business. We'd be trading those bonds. Mm -hmm. so, so nothing's 100%. So, so the same administration has to be done on indexing as done on VUL 10, 15, 20 years out. Mm -hmm. It's just a question of what the potential outcomes are. And the VUL potential outcomes are obviously greater because the volatility is greater. Mm -hmm. So you can have a lot higher return, a lot lower return, whatever it's going to be. And on index VUL provides a consistency, but you also give up a lot in the process. Well, when I'm thinking of VUL making a comeback, and we hear rumors now. I'm just going to bring up the rumor. You say, you, you say I always want to be the guy on the edge here. Yeah. There are carriers, two of them that I know right now, that are thinking of actually making a guaranteed VUL floor, some kind of hedge position using an Ibbotson model yeah. that will actually deliver and allow you to participate in the index on dividends, which I think is unheard of. Yeah, there are a couple There are a couple yeah. that are planning that, and there are a couple that already have something like that. Mm -hmm. And that's, that is a great example of where the VUL may go. Mm -hmm. And those funds would work well from an income standpoint, but also from a death benefit protection standpoint, mm -hmm. because you get rid of some of the risk. That, you know, when you use VUL for death benefit, you have a lot of volatility risk. Right. Um, and it, that can either work in your favor or mm -hmm. work against you. And those kind of types of funds sort of, uh, again, limit the upside, but also limit mm -hmm. the downside. So, you know, imagine a world in three or five years where VUL subaccounts are, you know, right now maybe they range like this. Maybe in, the, in, in five years they look like this. And the gamut is so large that we don't need indexed products individually. But, but Bobby, let me ask you about that because I think a lot of complaints we get to, uh, every time a guy says, Steve, I was doing great on the VOL app until I had to go to the asset allocation model. Uh, yeah. And I'm sitting there like, it's already too big. Now you're saying, wow, it may be, the selection may be even bigger. Yeah, so here's the issue with the allocation model is if I look down 65, 80 mutual funds, right? A lot of them do basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. So what I would argue is instead of having 80 mutual funds, have eight mutual funds that run this range rather than 80 mutual funds in this range. Right. Things like what you're talking about, these protected funds, well, that's a separate, that's a separate mm -hmm. option, right? And that, because, okay, there's this great test, this great psychological study where people walked into a grocery store and they had 20 jams, okay, on the counter, jellies. And people go in and taste the jellies. And, and basically what they found was that they had one test that had 20 jams, one test that had five jams. Okay, people were more satisfied with what they chose when they had fewer choices. So on average, they rated the taste of the jams higher mm -hmm. when they had five to choose from versus 20. Same thing happens in subaccounts. If you give people a paralyzing array, they're mm -hmm. never happy with what they chose. If you give them five or six options and say, these are the five or six mm -hmm. we think are good, people are going to be happier with what they choose. So I think having a better, broader array, but fewer options that do better things and, and really tell a story to people, is a, I think that's where it's going to go. And again, that could be fixed account mm -hmm. over here, indexed, separate accounts, and stuff like that. Well, Bobby, I was just thinking, extrapolating from your allegory there, <laughs> if I have a gazillion VUL contracts out on the table, 
yeah, people don't. Maybe uh, that's too many. Clients don't know. And look, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a huge proponent of making decisions for clients mm -hmm. and saying, look, I've picked the three or four best, and here, here are the ones that I think best represent the things that you told me, mm -hmm. right? And so you don't need to look at 20 different contracts. Look that's at right. three or four or five. And you need to look at 20, but I, you need to show three or four or five. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's kind of what, the way I come to it. I'm looking forward to the Bobby Samuelson spreadsheet on every product <laughs> so that I don't have to do any of this anymore, and we'll just buy your hey, subscription. I have a website, thelifeproductreview.com. Hey, Check it out. There it is another commercial cha -ching. <laughs> You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or email me at steve at thebiz.tv. Well, that's the buzz on the biz for today. You've been in the zone, the business insurance zone. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use.